It's almost playoff game day, guys. Yes, after quite a regular season, some tea, some ups and downs, a little bit of everything sprinkled into the regular season. The Philadelphia Union are finally getting ready for game one of the playoffs, round one for them, facing off against New England. I'm Renee Washington, joined by J.P. Zabata and our beat writer for PHLY that covers the Union and does fantastic articles around the team, Larry Henry on the show. We're going to also have a special guest. It's a, it's a locked and loaded episode. We've got special guests who we're all thrilled to be able to talk to. Uh, Julian Carranza oh, yeah. going to be joining us on. So welcome to PHLY Union Podcast. Happy to have you guys here. Make sure you're liking, subscribing, joining the conversation because we've got plenty to get into. And guys, as we get ready for the start of the playoffs for the Union, we've obviously seen the wild card madness mm -hmm. and the, the game ones of that. Lots of goals. <laughs> Uh, how are how are we feeling about this format? I mean, overall, looking at it, I think obviously there, there's going to be folks that might like it, might not. Um, I think it's it's still kind of a, new to me a little bit when I look at the best of three. I think it's going to bring a lot of it's going to definitely test every team's uh, depth and the fitness levels at this point of the season. Um, the la the games last night were were awesome to watch. Uh, high scoring up at the Red Bulls, and Oof. then. You had the penalty shootout in uh, in Kansas City, which was the complete opposite. <laughs> um, but overall, really uh, pleased with the two matches so far. Uh, would have liked to see the Red Bulls get knocked out, but that's right. another story. It's the Philly what thing. Do we uh, have? Yeah, we yeah. all would have loved that. But uh, but overall, uh, I think we're gonna see uh, definitely a lot of uh, atmosphere coming up this weekend and a lot of energy. I'm with you. I think it's been entertaining, very very exciting as well. I'm kind of like in the same spot with like Leagues Cup. Yeah, extra soccer, very entertaining, but. Do we need it? I don't know. I, I'm fine with the eight teams on each conference. I'm not okay with this first round that we're about to go through. I don't think we need a best of three series. That's yeah. just my personal opinion. But I think we're going to get some more exciting soccer. Like we have discussed in previous episodes, Renee, this Eastern Conference is wide open. So we should continue seeing some more exciting soccer. And it continues on. Yeah, I mean, I think it is. It's crazy to see first of all the games that happened mm -hmm. Wednesday night seven goals in a game is Oof. for anybody that ever says soccer is boring because there are no goals <laughs> <laughs> look at that game that stand corrected but I do think it's to me a little much this this first round and also yeah. even the fact it goes if, if it's tied up after regulation you're going straight into penalty kicks which is honestly not typical of most games uh sometimes you get like the traditional overtime but it's just like Tied up, headed to PKs, and and someone else is going to PKs, guys. I don't know if it's I don't know who it's going to be. We're going to see some more penalty kick yeah. shootouts. Um, obviously, we saw it with San Jose and Sporting KC. It felt like a penalty kick shootout for New York Red Bulls, but obviously, it was not. It's a joke. <laughs> I I just think the first round having a best of three, I agree, is too much. I think yeah. that as you're progressing in the playoffs, it's fine to ramp things up as they go along. But I'm also fine with the first round being like a one and done single game elimination. Get in, get out. And I, but what pains me more about it is the longevity of the first round. It'd be one thing if we're talking about three games where it's like Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday type mm -hmm. of a deal. Obviously, you might not have a third game, but the fact that it's the 28th of October into the 8th of November into the 12th of November, we said this on our show on Tuesday, but it's, it's this joke is sadly so accurate. You are literally going to go from game one trick or treating <laughs> to game three carving up a turkey. You cannot have a, a first round that covers basically, it feels like half a year is literally. what it's gonna take them to play. Just the first round alone. That part I do not like. And, and I don't know about you two, but the reality of that, uh, the Western Conference wild card game really settled in with me because as we all know, yeah. the Union play low scoring games, they play through 90 minutes. So if we have to go into penalty shootouts, in a first round, that doesn't bode well for a team that's already played what fifty plus matches in the in this it's year. Smelling so far. like we're going to get some PKs. Woo wee! Yeah, that's actually what had me nervous as I'm watching, and I'm like, "Holy crap, this could be the Union in a mm. penalty kick shootout." Whew, I'm I'm not ready for that. No. I don't want that. But this team we've seen have offensive production that could be good. Defensive production that could be good or on the other side may not be so good. Uh, but let's hope that's not the case this weekend. Game one, obviously, Saturday night at Subaru Park. Uh, we will have some exciting news around a giveaway as we get into the show later. Stay tuned. Welcome into you guys. I know Eugene Krabs is talking about King Julian. Yes, hey. we've got King Julian joining us later. 
Uh, Babita is saying hello, hello. I, nice to have you here as well. Make sure you guys are joining in the conversation because now let's talk about that game that's coming up. It is going to be pretty interesting. Um, game one, 5 p.m. Eastern time. Obviously, Subaru Park, which is always great to get a home game. The Union did at least do a great job of clinching home away home and now being able to play uh, one, possibly two playoff games at home against the New England Revolution coming off of that 2-1 loss. Larry, I'll start with you since I'll, you know, I'll, I'll give you the chance first. What are your thoughts heading into this game? How are you feeling about game one Saturday night? Yeah, I mean, overall, I think it's it's exciting. Obviously, whenever the playoffs are back at Subaru Park, the atmosphere is awesome mm -hmm. uh, to be there. The confidence will be, you know, surrounding the team. Uh, I'm a little hesitant just with how the way the union finished the regular season. Um, not only the fact that they lost on decision day. I mean, it's it's one loss. You put it behind you. Now you're in the playoffs. But they only won one of their last eight. Yeah. Um, so, and I mean, yes, they've only lost one of their last eight, too. But mm -hmm. there's consistency in picking up points but you are a little worried i think if you are maybe a union fan just looking at okay we we weren't able really to pick up three points on a consistent basis uh over the last about month or so um you know what kind of energy will be surrounding the team uh the revs obviously you know have some confidence now they just beat the union uh, at home obviously i remember a few years ago it wasn't like that it seemed like the union were winning every game against the revs and then i remember 2020 yeah, uh obviously losing you know union losing at home to the revs mm -hmm. uh in the playoffs so i'm sure that might be in the back of some of the players minds but overall I think the union at home, uh, the place will be rocking. I think the players will be ready to go. Um, everyone back, you know, from from international duty. And uh, overall, I think the union have to be, you know, favorites to get a result uh, on Saturday night. Let's be honest, guys. It's put up or shut up time for the union. <laughs> like, literally, it's put up or shut up time for the union because we're now in the playoffs. The excuses are over. It's, I mean, obviously not win or go home, but game one, you're at Subaru Park. That is the home field advantage that you absolutely need. We've been really a, a much better team at home than away from Subaru Park. So it's important to start off game one on, on a good note. You mm -hmm. need to put them away. Obviously, aggregate's not a thing here like you're, yeah. you do in Champions League. But for momentum, it's important to put New England away, especially they have the momentum right now. They got the confidence right now because they just won a week mm -hmm. ago. So it's going to be extremely important. Now, on the fan base side of things, Look, obviously, the fans are a little frustrated. And it's not just the Union fans, but if you look at the mindset of Philly sports fan, we just went through a rough year. A <laughs> lot of big losses. Understatement. We just had a Game 7 loss this week, which I know Renee doesn't want to talk about anymore. Uh, but right now, the psyche of the fan base, we're tired. We're fatigued. Like, how can we be optimistic for this game? But obviously, Renee, as you know, I'm going to be optimistic for Saturday and for the series. And I'm not optimistic anymore. I'm, I've am i lost all my optimism. It's gone. It's gone. Um, <laughs> and it's a shame because this is what happens as a Philly sports fan and definitely even covering the team. But, you know, as you talk, you both talk about the momentum, the home field advantage, the fact that the union have struggled to win games in their last eight outings. That makes me very nervous because I do still. That's why that penalty kick format. uh was something that jumped out at me because that makes me completely nervous that it's going to come down to PKs. And in PKs, it's anybody's game at that point. Love Andre Blake. It's anybody's game at that point. Mm -hmm. But I am hoping and would hope that the union have had enough of a scuffle at the end of the season that this is a chance for them to kind of go into it. It's the, it's the start of a new year. This is a chance. Okay, we just need to focus on the game at hand. Before you had to focus on playoff seating and trying to get a home game and where you're going to finish in the East. None of that anymore. You now just have to focus on winning the game one at a time. And so I'm encouraged by that, but I'm not encouraged by a couple of other things. Um, one, the inability to keep clean sheets. Two, the inability to score. And then three, that I just don't know what union team is going to show up, most importantly. So that has me a little bit nervous. And I continue to say the same thing. I talked about it for the Phillies. I'm talking about it for the union. The inconsistency and the ups and downs of this team make me very nervous. I don't know how you guys are feeling in the chat. I know, uh, Dominic, you're saying Martinez will be the man of the match. Mm. Crucial for the union and defense mm -hmm. and offense. Could not agree more. That's a, a big piece. I know, JP, we talked about that yeah. on our show on Tuesday. The midfield struggles without having a true playmaker and a creator. Mm -hmm. McGlynn and, and Bedoya play so similarly. Mm -hmm. And we could see where the union and that loss last week to the Revs struggled because they didn't have Martinez out there. 
And they having him back will hopefully be much better, especially in controlling the midfield. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Obviously, Bueno um, as well on that injury list. We'll, we'll mm-hmm. have so heads up. Obviously, tomorrow we'll have the presser with Jim, so we'll have some more information. We'll find out that point. But no, it's, that's going to be extremely important. And uh, Dominic, I agree with you. Uh, Martinez is going to be extremely important. If it's not him, Bueno, um, I'm sure Martinez will be fine though. But you know, you're talking about controlling the match for the midfield. That's the most important piece there. You know, possibly if you have Martinez back, you don't have to go to that three back set that you love so much, Renee. So oh, that, that could but that could never be a part. Again. <laughs> that would be a part of it as well. Um, but real quick, ladies and gentlemen, as we gear up for the playoffs, I just want to let everyone know about one of our dear sponsors in Foco. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you guys check out our friends over at Foco, the leading manufacturer of sports and, and entertainment merchandise and with a product line that includes apparel accessories toys collectibles and novelty items you're gearing up for the playoffs well make sure you guys check out for uh for foco for some of that gear there and right now when you use the code phly you'll get 10 percent off so thank you to our friends over at foco and with that said i just want to take this over to larry real quick larry because carlos he is very important for new England, mm. especially in that attack and i felt like you know i, I talked about it in our last episode I feel like he had a lot of room to roam and do as he pleased. He didn't really kill us per se, but it was it seemed easy for him. You know, obviously Martinez back is important, but how do the union, you know, control that important engine to the, the New England attack? It, it's tough. I mean, it, it's a uh, question I think you could ask a lot of MLS defenses this season because yeah. Heal has been uh, amazing. 11 goals, 15 assists this season, just doing it. Uh, each week for the Revs. And I think for the Union, right? So I think I agree with you uh, 100%. I think Martinez is going to be crucial. I think he will play. Um, and having him there, right? You have that kind of destructor in midfield, a guy who can get under the skin a little bit of, of oh, Carlos yeah. Hill. And uh, and overall, I, I just think that I think he is crucial to that. Um, the Revs kind of play a unique system where they have the three uh, midfielders, but like you said, Heel just rooms around, picks up the ball in deep deep pockets, goes upfield, um, and then you know can can make so many things happen. So uh, I think it's going to be kind of a one on one matchup. I think whoever wins that matchup is probably going to win the game in terms of you know do the Revs get out of Chester with a uh, with a lead uh, in this series or do the Union take um, take that on the road? Uh, a lead on the uh, on the road for the second leg, but um, but overall, I think that's going to be the matchup. Obviously, I'm going to be watching. I'm sure you guys will be watching oh, it yeah. too, because you have two of the best in MLS at their respective positions uh, going head to head. And I think Martinez is just so good too, too, because you he, he, I mean, it's a lot of pressure I think on a midfielder to, to cover heel mm-hmm. for 90 minutes. But I think he's just he's he's born for that. He does that each week, and that just <clears> lets the other guys, whether it's McGlynn, Bedoya. Um, some others, Gazdag, uh, go upfield and do their thing as well. And controlling the midfield is is so important to winning the game. Yeah, you know, it's your it's helping you keep possession. It's helping you in transition. It's helping you create more, and you're threatening more. And so that is where, at times, especially without Bueno, without Martinez, the Union have struggled because they don't have that guy that's truly controlling the midfield. I know I've talked about Jack McGlynn and Ali Bedoya as truly just box-to-box possession types of guys. They're the ones that just balance things out. But they're not the ones that are that things are running through. You want them to be kind of like the number two. And your true midi, Martinez, is more of the, the quarterback that's mm-hmm. helping, you know, get forward and find Daniel Gazdag, finding Julian Carranza. So there, that's where I'm, a li- I'm much more optimistic this go-round with Martinez on the pitch I also think, I know, Dominic, you're saying if we go 4 yeah. 2 I feel confident at home. That's also why I like the 4 4 2 I think the 3 5 2 is so straight, and, and you almost are um, taking away your, your space in the attack. You know, having a 4 4 2 especially with a pinched midfield and a diamond midfield, allows for Kai Wagner or oh, yeah. Nate Harrell to get up into space. But they're already higher up, and then you have your three middies on top of each other, and you're just taking away that space for them to have runs and have – you know, have options. And then the twin strikers are just kind of moving, trying to hold balls up and, and not really having that instant support. So I love what a 4-4-2 brings. It's always been my favorite formation to play in. It's always been my favorite formation to watch because I think it really helps you unbalance teams. You now have the ability to have whoever's sitting in is 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 your is your true clog. They're just balancing the midfield. Your other three can now freely roam and honestly go wherever they want, make runs, move, and help you control things. So uh yeah, I'm hoping that we ha- we have a 4-4-2. I know it's it's a shame because Damian Lowe's been 
been a big benefiter from the 3-5-2 to get more minutes. But if it means a 4-4-2, you go out, you're more of an attacking formation. I love it. Babita, thank you for the comments on my shirt. I'm well, a, I think it's the lighting because it's giving more it, gold, Union Gold. Yeah, <laughs> it is actually right now giving more Union Gold. It's the lights, but it actually, I don't know what color to consider this. But yeah, you know, I wanted to go with a little Union color. This is me uh, going gold because I know we're having like uh, the gold, the drums out and all that tomorrow. Yes. So I'm, I'm just getting ahead of the game. Um, I know you were also saying you don't like our chances against the Boston New England team. Eugene Kravitz mm. is saying a great point. We did see the Eagles beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. Uh -huh. We have had success in the postseason against New England and also failure. But most <laughs> recently, success. And hopefully the same thing goes this weekend. But a point that you brought up, Larry, as you were saying, it made me cringe. You were saying either the Revs can can take the lead or the Union take the lead and go on the road up 1-0. And the thing that made me cringe was thinking about the union going on the road down i know that's that's terrifying this first game is so 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 crucial you're at home you already dropped the regular season finale on decision day to the revs and you have a chance to for the next 10 days go into it feeling good about yourself and it gives you kind of an insurance game now i don't love a game three just like i don't love a game seven mm. or game five but i think if you now are taking the lead early in the series you jump out for momentum, for even the next 10 days to be lighter, mm -hmm. you need that win. But to already have a stretch of one out of eight games that you that you, um, that you win, a number of ties, a, number, a loss in that, and then to turn around and, and drop the – if you were to drop the first game of the postseason, I think that's it. Like, it, it, this to me, this is, a, this is the must-win game because morale is already a little bit low, it feels like, and the team already is struggling to get results. And to come in the postseason, I'm imagining the conversation has been, let that go, let's move on, let's focus on the postseason. So that if you jump off to a, a bad start in the postseason, might as well put some mustard on top of that because it's, <laughs> it's a wrap. It's a wrap, okay? So I am hoping and, and confident that yeah. the union will come out renewed, re-energized with Martinez and Bueno out there. Of course, like you said, we'll get the official wording in our presser Friday but I'm feeling good if, if they're on the pitch. I'm not feeling so good if they're not. Yeah, and I think the thing you look at it too is both of these teams are, are pretty sim similar in a way because, yes, they did finish the regular season both with 55 points. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, different, you know, something else happens. Maybe the Union yeah. aren't in that fourth spot. They're in that fifth spot going on the road possibly twice. I mean, but both of these teams have been really dominant at home. Uh, the Union with 10 wins at home this season, uh, only five away from Subaru Park. Mm -hmm. The Revs have 12 wins at home, um, whereas they only have three away from Gillette Stadium. So um, it just kind of shows you both these teams enjoy playing at home, have done well at home. Both of them have only lost uh, one home league match this mm -hmm. season. Um, yep. So I think that is crucial, obviously, that the Union got the number four seed or able to, if they do have to go three games, they get two at home. Uh, and we just know they, they they play a different style when they're on the road. and um, But I think the confidence at home, obviously, is key. I agree with you. I mean, you guys see it all the time. It's a completely different team when mm -hmm. they're at home. It, it's 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 our fortress. It, it literally is our fortress here. Um, uh, one thing I'm going to be looking out, out for, and I'm curious your guys' thoughts as well, this attack has been pretty stale as well. Maybe with Martinez back, it'll help out with counterattacking because you know mm -hmm. we know – how important he is. Uh, you you mentioned quarterback. I see him more as a point guard when he's coming up, yeah, up and up yeah. the field like that, and he's able to pick a part there. It'll it'll be very interesting to see. And obviously, we talked about in the last game, but more importantly here for the playoffs, Jim is mm -hmm. the most experienced manager between both these teams. And so I think that's going to be really crucial as well. Uh, I mean, well, I'm sure we'll talk about the fan base right now, but I'm curious how the atmosphere will look exactly. From my understanding, we still have a lot of tickets available. What are you guys doing? Go get your tickets. <laughs> but uh, I, that's going to be uh, – those are a lot of interesting things to see, the attack in this atmosphere exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you are looking to get out to a game or whatever and you want to uh, show up in style, not only can you uh, do so easily through FOCO, but you can also do so – sorry, I'm, I'm on the wrong ad. Even I threw – I kind of, I, I curbed it. I curbed it. I could have dropped in game time there, but you want to show up to the, to the game at Subaru Park in style. You can rock some shady rays. There it is. <laughs> You're going to need it Saturday. Off. Yeah. So shady rays allows you to have eyewear that's all year round. You can have snow goggles for those wintry days. And when you want to go out snowboarding or skiing, you can also have some nice shades as you're rocking. 
at Subaru Park, at the beach, out at the park, um, walking your dog, whatever it is that you're doing. So if you head over to Shady Rays now, there's a great deal for you for all of, of, of our listeners. Using that code PHOY gives you 50% off when you buy two or more uh, any of any sort of eyewear. So polarized sunglasses, you buy two or more of those and you get a nice 50% off deal. So definitely a great opportunity to take advantage because not only are they looking great on your face, but they also allow you, if you ever break any or, or lose them, they will repair your sunglasses or send you a new pair. So I don't know about you. That's a great deal in my book. And also 250,000 people agree. They've been rated five stars by over 250,000 people for the way that they support their customers, provide them with re replacements or repairs, and also just give you some really awesome shades that you can rock. Eugene Krabs, I know you thought it was going to be game time. So did Tyler. We're not at game time yet. We're not there yet. Uh, vibes are really low right now. It does mm. feel like the fans, Travman, as you're you're saying, fans are not confident with the squad and the team right now. Jose, I know you're saying ticket prices have also decreased. Mm. As you guys are here again, hit that like button. Join the conversation. JP, you mentioned it. Morale is low. Ticket prices are getting even lower, too. It's not a great time right now for fans because, unfortunately, what I've seen on Twitter and, and what I've heard is just a lot of people aren't believing in the union, especially with the closeout for the regular season. Mm -hmm. I honestly understand it. I get it. It's, it's, it's tough to have confidence in this group because we've seen them have so many struggles, offensively especially, defensively as well, of blowing leads. I couldn't get over the fact that four out of their eight last games, they led and ended up losing or tying. That's that to me in, in the point of the season where you're supposed to be trending in the right direction. Instead, you're giving up leads and you're losing points as a result of it. So I fully understand why some fans might not be the highest morale. But, uh, you know, what are your thoughts on just what this how you expect this team to come out? Are you guys feeling confident they're going to come out looking like how the union plays best with the movement, the opportunities? Or are you expecting them to kind of continue with what we saw at the end of the regular season? I'll let you go first, Larry. Yeah, I mean, I think obviously they know the pressure's on now, right? They know that it hasn't, I mean, it, it, getting to the playoffs, that's their first goal. Um, you know, getting a spot, obviously, for the the, uh, the newly formatted uh, CONCACAF Champions Cup, mm -hmm. that was crucial too. Um, but they know that this is um, this is crucial now. You get to MLS Cup in 2022, um, heartbreaking ending uh, against LAFC. And then now you have a chance to, to get back there, um, obviously, LAFC, uh, in a similar boat, right? Because they haven't been as dominant um, in, in their road to get back in the Western Conference. Um, but overall, I think the union players know, look, we haven't had a good run of things the last month or two, month or so. Um, mm. You know, we, we got to get back to what we do best. And that's, that's pestering teams at Subaru Park, getting under their skin, um, being dominant with the ball, creating opportunities. Um, and I think, uh, Renee, like you said, with the, with the back line, obviously a lot of kind of simple mistakes with this team, T things that we didn't see a lot last season, conceding a lot of goals, blowing yeah. leads that, that, that was, that's not a Philadelphia union team to me. Um, and the, the funny thing is they haven't lost a lot from that team last yeah. year in terms of leadership on the back end. So, uh, I think they're going to come out with a lot of fire against this revs team. They're better than this revs team. Uh, and they know obviously that the pressure is on now you're, you're the, you're the higher seed. A lot of people are going to expect you to advance. Now go out there and prove it. Mm. Nothing's given to you in these playoffs, and we've learned that before. Um, it's interesting. Yeah, you're, you're right, Larry. Like, so much uncharacteristic things have happened for a lot of players. Andre Blake's had goals oh. allowed that he rarely ever allows to happen. It's just really, really weird. Uh, for the for, Let's start for the fans. For the fans, I, I understand their frustration. And I think the majority of the fan base right now is super frustrated because of the Alley and the Kai News. These are mm. two important players of the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, for Kai, a lot of people believe he's he's deserving of that money. And obviously the union have their own thoughts as well. Alley, that was handled a little bit more disrespectfully as we Ugh. talked about as well. And so for, for a lot of the fans, that's, that's uneasy for <laughs> them. We care about these players. These players give up a lot for our team. So I, I understand why the fans do feel like that. And I think a lot of it has to do, like I mentioned, just the fatigue in Philly sports. We went through an MLS Cup final loss last year that was heartbreaking. Uh, the Phillies with the World Series loss, now the NLCS uh, NLCS loss. The Birds losing the Super Bowl. Flyers have been the Flyers, really. <laughs> uh, so it's been really frustrating as a Philly sports fan. And I think that a lot of it, you know, translate over here. But with all that being said, 
that should just push these players. Yeah. That should just piss you off and go out there Saturday and play your best match. People, not only are people down on you, but now your own fan base is down on you. That would piss me off. And obviously, this looks like to be the last dance with this group, with Kai and 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 with with Ali as well with that news. So yeah, I want to see that intensity. You know, we talked about the yep. biggest factor for losing last week was the lack of intensity. I need to see that here this Saturday to start it off. Gosh, I'm so tired of talking about teams not playing with intensity <laughs> or not having that um, oh that gosh, grit and Christ. heart to want to to want to go on and win. I know Chad, man, you're saying with. So many problems, Bedoya, so Wagner, the recent loss against the Revs. It's hard to believe they're, yeah. you know, it's hard to believe in them. I know, Babita, you're saying the same thing that you were just talking about, JP. The yeah. Phillies choked. The Sixers have, I forgot the, Sixer, yeah. the Sixers season is starting, but I'm getting some nerves there as always. Uh, now it feels like it's the union's turn. Yes, Eugene Krabs. It sadly does feel like Russian roulette <laughs> with our hearts. <laughs> so sadly accurate. Um, no antidepressants hopefully needed, but I think... For me, the hardest thing is after going to the MLS Cup last year, there mm -hmm. were uh, there's two ways that you can respond. You can be motivated by that and say, we were so close. Let's get back one more. You know, we just need to go one step further or that pressure could break you. And I honestly, I'm starting to feel like that pressure broke the union because like you mentioned, a lot of those same guys are back. So what is the difference? The difference is opponents have come into this season ready to knock off the union and show they didn't belong in the MLS Cup and show they're not a top team in the league. The union haven't made changes and they've taken their foot off the gas, the lack of intensity, the lack of creativity, and even how they're playing. And it just feels like this team was already down because they couldn't, I hate to say it, weren't handling the pressure of being a top team. But then you sprinkle in Kai Wagner, you sprinkle in Ali Badoya, and the international break, like we talked about before, is supposed to be a break to rest and recover. <laughs> but instead became, became a chance where the team was like, holy crap. Our captain, our leader, is is being treated disrespectfully. It's unprofessional. Now, the other side of that, Dominic, is fatigue. I do agree with you. But I do feel like the fatigue on the mental side started because they lost in the MLS Cup. It's like, oh, we have to get back to the MLS Cup. We have so many games we've already played, but we have so many games left to play. And there's it's such a long journey to get there. It's, to me, maybe even overthinking in a sense. A there's point. all these things going on. And rather than just focusing on winning that 50-50 ball, scoring that goal, making that save, it feels like the team's mentally all over the place because of the pressure, the, the news, the fatigue. And it's, it's definitely uh, frustrating. So hopefully t tomorrow, excuse me, not tomorrow, Saturday, it feels like it should be Friday. Hopefully Saturday, things are better. And it's, it's one thing for us to talk about it, but I think it's best if we hear it from somebody that's actually on the pitch and has been going through all the ups and downs of the season firsthand. Julian Carranza, one of the leading goal scorers coming into this, into this weekend, 14 goals, six assists in regular season play. Been doing a tremendous job with the union. Julian, bienvenido, amigo. Welcome, friend. Nice to have you here. Cool. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you guys? We are We're doing great. well. We're thrilled to have you on, though. Excited to be able to chop it up with you and talk about the season. Um, now, before we officially get started, I know you're a busy man. How much time do you have for us? I want to make sure we get you in and out of here in good time. I mean, whatever it takes. I'm here. Oh, 10 hours it is then. <laughs> Say less. Like the <laughs> All right. right. Even better. Even better. Let's get comfortable then. Okay. So how are you feeling is the bigger question. You guys obviously gearing up for the start of the postseason. How are you feeling right now? I mean, the feeling is good. Uh, of course, uh, the first step is the playoffs. And after, uh, of course, we want to, uh, we want to end like last year, get into the final uh but okay we have to to start for the first step that is saturday and after just keep working and keep waiting for the second game of playoffs that's going to be in 10 days after saturday so uh, our mindset is that just game by game and then yeah we're just uh, getting ready for it julian hablo español o inglés con cuál estás más cómodo Español, si quieres, no hay problema. Listo, listo. <risa> vea, parce, que te quería preguntar, vea, hay mucha gente que está hablando sobre la situación con Kai Wagner y con Alejandro Pedoya, tu, tu capitán. Para usted y para tus compañeros, ¿cómo se tranquilizan ¿Cómo, cómo, con esas noticias que, es que están haciendo para estar enfocado en el partido que viene? 
Bueno, creo que las cosas que pasan afuera del campo no, no deben influir lo que pasa en nuestro rendimiento. Si bien, uh -huh. bueno, son, son temas que no son míos y no me gusta hablar de eso porque no es algo que me, claro. que me, que me corresponde hablar. Así que eh, yo creo que todos se enfocan en, en dar el máximo dentro del campo de juego y bien lo estamos haciendo. Y bueno, lo que pase afuera ya eh, es algo que no se puede manejar, es algo que... Yo no puedo manejar, nadie puede manejar, así que nada, eh, creo que nuestra mentalidad está en, en solamente el partido y lo que es afuera, es afuera. Yeah, so, so uh, I asked Julian about, obviously, a lot of the talk with Kai and with Ali, um, and obviously for Julian, he can only focus on what he can focus on, and so for right now, and for his guys as well, it's, it's all about taking care of what they can control. Uh, he can't really put himself into that type of matter because he can't control it, which I, I agree with Julian for sure. I'm yeah, and for those of you that are joining us now, um, JP's Colombian, Julian's from Argentina. I speak <laughs> no. Spanish, but now I just got super intimidated when you guys just, you, did, you didn't warn me that we were switching over. <laughs> Listen, I minored in Spanish, Julian, Julian, and I feel comfortable speaking it with people that don't speak Spanish. And y'all right now are making me super intimidated, but I did understand everything you were saying. Renee, but you got that cumbia. I saw you, girl. <laughs> I mean, it's different when we speak with each other. It's different. It is. It we is speak, exactly. We speak faster and then using different <laughs> words. Yeah, so. like I was gonna, I was gonna say, I was gonna ask a question. It was just gonna be so slow. Um, <laughs> that's the biggest difference. You're so much quicker. But I know in the chat you're getting some love. People are sending, uh, saying you're their goat. We're getting the hard eyes <laughs> or the. Someone said you're beautiful. They're calling you King Julian. Um, talk about how this how this fan base has embraced you and and really been you know so welcoming for you since you joined the union. I mean, they've been great to us, for to me, to my fiance, to everyone, my family when they came. Uh, they really they they really support the team even when when we're not in the in our best games. I think. Since I'm here these two years, I've never been in a, on, on a, in, in, at Subaru Park with less than 15,000 people every single game. That's insane. I have friends in another team asking me about uh, the fans, like they're crazy. Everyone told me uh, in Miami, in Columbus, like everyone just makes a comment about our fans. And I think they make me feel welcome here. Uh, that's the first thing I love about this team. And then they're here every single game, and uh, that's good for us. Believe me or not, when you're on the field and you hear the 20,000 people screaming, uh, it makes you want to go for more and more. And then that's what makes the Philadelphia Union fans so special. Mm -hmm. Love that. Julian, te quería preguntar, ¿qué has escuchado? Antes que, vin antes que eras jugador de Philadelphia, ¿qué has escuchado de esta ciudad y de, de, de la hinchada acá también? No había escuchado mucho, sinceramente. Okay. Eh, cuando estaba en Miami, eh, sí habíamos jugado contra Philly en la burbuja, en Orlando, pero no había escuchado mucho de la ciudad. Sí vine a jugar aquí dos veces, creo, con Miami, pero nada, nada especial. Nunca, eh, nunca dijeron nada malo, tampoco nada bueno. Nunca tuve ninguna, eh, ningunos comentarios de, de Filadelfia, pero bueno, una vez que llegué aquí fue... Fue todo muy diferente y fue todo muy lindo, gracias a Dios. ¿Y ya estás acostumbrado al frío o no? <risa> no. <risa> no, so no, no I, me gusta. Para nada. <risa> so I asked Julian about uh, just kind of expanding upon that question and just what he's heard about Philly, the city yeah. and the fans before coming in here. Uh, he hasn't really heard much. Um, obviously, people in Miami, like he just said, talk, said stuff to him. But of course, uh, I have to ask because I was born here. I've lived here my whole life. I'm still not used to the cold, and I asked Julian about it as well, and he's, well, it's not, no one can get used to it. It's not. No. Yeah, I was born here, and I'm not used to it. Like, I'm cold <laughs> all the time, and and it's better when you're playing. Like, when I used to play um, in games. No, no, it's not, it's not very when you're playing, huh? Yes, it's it very is. Cold. Oh, and it's so much. At Subaru Park, next to the river, the wind. No, 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 no. Not, okay, I, I will agree with you on that. I will say that's a great point. <laughs> that's a really good point. But I will say when I was playing, I didn't have to play at Subaru Park, so I didn't have those issues. But once you're running around, it feels mm. a little bit better than when you're standing there. But okay, by the river yeah. is, is cold. It's a little Just cold. It's a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so for you, 
you know, specifically, let's let's stay on this trail about you, and we'll talk we'll talk more about the team in a little bit. Um, you know, you grew up learning Spanish and English. What was that? What was that like for you? How did you learn? I mean, your your English is great. I know you talk about like I miss speaking Spanish. I'm sure you have moments of like that too at times. Um, learning English. I grew up. No, English. I grew up. I grew up speaking Spanish. Okay. Until I was in Miami, I've never speak a word of English. <clears throat> and after I met my fiance now, Claudia, and then she speaks Spanish perfectly. She's French, and then she was teaching me English and French. And then that's how I, I pick up with English. And then now, obviously, it's perfect. Not not perfect, of course. It's very good, but I can communicate. I can do everything. And then, yeah, she taught me English and French as well. So uh, ah, parlez -vous that's français. how I learned. I learned, I learned for love. I have to. <laughs> Parlez-vous français? Oui, un, un petit peu et toi? May we? My brother-in-law's French. That's all I got. I can count in French. Okay. I can ask people if they know how to speak French. I can say my name in French, and then that's about it. But you're Como trilingual. That's awesome. Como tu t'appelles? Ah, uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, je m'appelle René. <laughs> oh, oui. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Did just, I don't know how to answer Did that. You... Did you ask me how uh, I am? Uh... No, no. I asked you what's your what, what was your name. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I thought so. Okay, I knew it. I knew it. There you oh, go, I should have. I should have said that with confidence. Actually, isn't it Isabel? Semantics. Semantics. I got the answer right. That's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know in the chat, people are saying they should have paid more attention to their Spanish class. Yes, Eugene Krabs, <laughs> you should have paid more attention in Spanish class. It's very beneficial to know multiple languages in this world. Everybody speaks multiple languages outside of America. We're the only country that just learns English for the most part. Um, Jose is asking, how's your German and Greek? Uh, have you thought about adding any more languages? You already speak three. Um, uh, have you thought about adding I have any to more? Finish, I have to finish French first, and after <laughs> I'll see uh, what's the language that I want to learn. I, I do want to learn Portuguese or Italian. Hey. So Those Italian. are easier because I speak Spanish, so... I'll go for those. Poco, poco. Eh, Julian, quiero preguntar de tu crianza. ¿Vos eh, naciste en Onquetavio, Argentina? Listo. Y, y háblanos de, de tu crianza, cómo era creándose en Onquetavio y cualquier cosa que te, pues, te tú identificas como de, de, de siendo de Onquetavio, perdón, Onquetivo. No, bueno... Me he creado en un pueblo muy chico con mucha o muy poca gente. Eh, solamente había dos equipos de fútbol y eh, la rutina del día era solamente despertarse, ir a la escuela, eh, volver a casa e ir a entrenar, eh, así por años. Eh, era algo muy lindo, la verdad, sinceramente eh, disfruté mucho de, desde que era chico estando en un cativo en mi pueblo donde crecí. Eh, y bueno, después tuve, el, a los 13 años tuve que irme a Buenos Aires a jugar para Banfield, así que eh, fue un cambio muy grande porque era muy chico y la decisión fue de, de un día para el otro. Eh, así que nada, eso le costó mucho a mi familia. A mí no tanto porque no, no me daba cuenta de lo que significaba ese cambio grande, pero bueno, a mi familia sí le costó y, y creo que hasta el día de hoy eh, pues te pueden decir y se pueden agarrar a llorar de lo que fue esa decisión, así que... Eh, fue complicado, pero bueno, eh, lo disfruté mucho y creo que creo fue, uno de los, fue uno de los grandes pasos para que yo pueda estar aquí hoy. ¿Y tu familia todavía está en Argentina o están por, por esos rumbos? No, no, sí, todos en Argentina. Todos están en Argentina. So, I pretty much, I just asked um, Julian, I was very curious about his upbringing. He's from Ocotayo, uh, Argentina. Um, he pretty much said his life was probably as you guys expected. Wake up, soccer, mm -hmm. and repeat. Um, and that was his life up until he was 13. He went to Buenos Aires, who where he played at, for Banfield. Um, but yeah, all the sacrifice paid off very well, I would say. And uh, his most of his, a lot of his family is still in Argentina. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Don't tell me I heard it. I know. <laughs> tell them. I could. I understood. I was picking up on what he was putting down. Again, I can hear. I can listen to it. So don't tell me. I feel like you're. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, JP was so excited, by the way, Julian, because yes. he was ready to kick me off the show and just have you two talk <laughs> because he's like, finally, I can talk Spanish with somebody. 
And uh, yeah, so I'm glad that y- we're able to have this for also our Spanish listeners. We do have people that listen that speak Spanish, and it's great for them to have a chance to also listen to the show. Um, I know Jillian is giving you a compliment saying that your English is better than the German that she studied for five years. Yep. And <laughs> Chavin also did have a good question that I want to ask about your favorite thing about the city of Philadelphia. What have you enjoyed the most besides the cold, obviously? <laughs> uh, that was a joke. <laughs> uh, what do I enjoy the most? Uh, just being at home. Uh, uh, when my fiance is here, we go to the pool, but uh, we go to some restaurants but if not i just stay home watch netflix uh, go to the gym sometimes i don't do much i i like to stay at home and then uh, yeah when she's here we the weekends we go to new york or uh we wanted to go to washington as well but we didn't so i don't do much i just stay at home and then uh, enjoy i enjoy being at home so you are a homebody and homebody. your favorite thing is to get out the city is what I heard to go to New York or go to like, go somewhere outside in Philly. Okay. Basically, <laughs> sounds, yeah. Okay. Sounds like you need to do some more Philly stuff. Maybe like there's some touristy things. Those are not exciting. Um, I don't know if you like to drink beer or wine. There's like wineries, breweries. There's okay. Food is always good. You can't go wrong with some food. Churrasco. Churrasco. Si, sí, cocino aquí. Abajo. Oh, of course. Oh. He knows. ¿Y cómo está tu chimichurri? Yeah. No me gusta el chimichurri. No te gusta no, el chimichurri. <laughs> he just got so upset. I, love, I could literally drink chimichurri. That's how I sound chimichurri. Oh, that's strong. <laughs> wow. I don't like chimichurri at all. So okay. then, okay, I'm a big Netflix person. I love watching a good movie. Um, Are you like into like any Halloween horror types of movies? Are you a fan of that? No, I just watch what is action, drama. Uh, I don't like uh, ciencia ficción. I don't know how you say that. Sci-fi, Science fiction, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't like that. Just I got that. Normal, <laughs> like nothing <laughs> crazy. Okay, you know what's interesting is when Nate and Jack were on the show, Jack McGlynn, um, I asked them about their f- favorite horror movies, and they were also saying the same thing. I don't know if that's something that is common across your team, that you guys don't like horror movies, but... I love a good horror movie. You guys are missing I went, out. I went last year to a, to a, um, I don't know how to, or how you like say Like a hayride? It. And yeah, here in Philly, like one, one hour away. Okay. With my fiance, Chuchu Bueno, and another friend. We went to a haunted house. Yes. I was going to ask about that. We Did went, you we like it? That one. It was, it was fun. Yes. <laughs> they, were, they, they were trying to scare us, but it was fun. Yeah. We enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Julian, háblanos de la relación que vos tenés con Gazdag y Urre y, y la celebración que ustedes tienen oh, también. Yeah. ¿De dónde viene la águila? <laughs> <laughs> no, bueno, sí, tenemos muy buena relación en el campo de juego, fuera del, del campo también. Eh, los tres viví, bueno, yo antes vivía cerca con Micael, vivíamos en el mismo edificio y ahora no. Así que él está en King of Prussia, o so, no nos juntamos mucho fuera del campo, pero, pero sí, la relación es muy buena, nos reímos mucho, disfrutamos mucho, compartimos también mucho de las mañanas. Eh, y nada, la celebración empezó con José Martínez en, eh, por el Super Bowl last year. Ah. Eagles, sí, que nosotros estábamos alentando a los Eagles y estábamos haciendo un video y les empezó a hacer como si fuese un Dale. Eagle, pero era un Flamingo y nos empezamos a reír. Y, y la celebración quedó de ahí, y cada vez que hacemos un gol, no sé quién dijo Dani, de empezar a hacerlo. Y cada vez que hacemos un gol intentamos, por supuesto, hacerlo, pero eh, es ese, es, de ahí salió por José y nosotros, bueno, eh, lo, y, lo seguimos haciendo. Y José, ¿es tan loco afuera del cancha como es en la cancha o no? <risa> ¿O es tranquilo? No, es más tranquilo, es mucho más tranquilo. Más tranquilo. Cuando están las sí, luces sí, prendidas, ya está listo. Sí, sí, le gusta, le gusta eso, le gusta. <laughs> so for those in the, in the audience there, we, we were asking um, Julian about the relationship with Gazag and Urre. Obviously, those guys on the pitch have great chemistry. Um, they, are, they have a great chemistry off the pitch as well. Um, uh, Mikael Urre actually lived pretty close uh, to Julian, but now 
Ure is a KOP guy. That's not, that's good to know. That's out there. That's out there. He likes to drive. He likes to drive. Um, and then I asked, and then he, we asked about the celebration, obviously, as we all know, when Carranza, Gaza, Ure score a goal, we see the Eagle. We love the, the celebration. And of course that stems from El Brujo Martinez from the Super Bowl, which I do remember, I think I remember that, that clip, but, uh, it stems from that. And I had to ask if El Brujo is, is that nuts outside the field <laughs> as he is on the, on the field. And, uh, he's a little bit more relaxed. So I think El Brujo likes the, the big lights of mm -hmm. the MLS here, which we, we appreciate here. I wouldn't even, I would not have expected that actually, but it is, it's part of being an athlete that like you're on the field temperament and personality is completely different off the field. What is that for you? Are you more of a relaxed guy? Also, I'm getting relaxed vibes from you, but are you the relaxed yeah, I'm guy? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm super chill, super relaxed <laughs> outside of the field. Uh, but, you know, when you are there on the stadium, like the adrenaline, everything going around, like everything going on in the game. And then, yeah, that came out, that comes out like uh, super easily. Uh, I, it, it happened to me to to fight, I mean, fight in Nashville. I don't know if you remember, guys. Oh, yeah. My second mm -hmm. red card. I, that's that's not me, but, you know, like, in those situations, like, on the field, like, fighting for, for get points and, like, all the game and the things going around, it uh, makes you, like, get upset like that or get mad and then, yes. But no, I'm not, I'm not that type of person. I'm super chill. And then uh, it just happened to be on the game and everything. Uh, that as I, as I told you everything that happens uh, makes you react like that but oh yeah yeah super chill it's fine i've gotten my fair share of yellow cards <laughs> in the day back in the day when i used to play still hey that's that's the best thing when you can turn it on and you can be like the calm cool and collective person but then also you can be the fiery person that maybe gets a yellow or a red um because you just yeah. opponents don't know what to expect so that's fine holy and we, we like that <laughs> Um, but we we have just a couple more minutes with you before we let you go. Um, just switching back to to the pitch and to the games uh, coming up. Obviously, it's crunch time. It's crunch time. Uh, as a player and and along with your teammates, what have you guys really been talking about? Obviously, it's been a lot these last couple of weeks. The results, Ali, Kai. There's been a lot going on. But what have you guys been talking about as a team just to be focused on the task at hand and winning starting Saturday? Well, yeah, everything that is happening, uh, to be honest, like nobody really talks about it. There's just a couple of players that make some comments and they start talking, but nothing crazy. And I think that we all know what we want as a team. We all want to 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 finish, uh, to win the, the Eastern Conference like last year and get to the final again. That's that's our mental, our uh, mentally, uh, we want to get there. And then whatever happens uh, after the season or outside of the team of the club, uh, it doesn't really matter to us. We just here, we're just here to do one job that is to win every single game. And then we're going to try to do that. And whatever happens after the season, whoever stays, whoever goes, uh, it's not that it's not something that is uh, bothering the team right now so uh, as i told you our mentally is just uh win every game we playoffs and get to the final again julian te quería con eso también te quería preguntar porque ese año ha jugado muchos partidos no hay un nuevo torneo el leagues cup ese formato de playoffs ha cambiado también vos como te sientes jugando tantos partidos este año ah, para serte honesto eh, no, creo que no soy el único jugador que se ha quejado de esto. Creo que han sido muchísimos partidos. Eh, hubo meses que jugábamos casi 10 partidos o 9. Uh -huh. eh, y es una locura. Tuvimos, tuvimos, creo que un, un mes tuvimos 9 partidos y tuvimos que viajar dos veces a, al West Coast. Y sinceramente no es algo que eh, a todos los jugadores les gusta. No es algo que no sé, no, no, sé, no sé si decirte normal o no, porque no sé qué es normal ya a este punto, eh, pero hay muchísimos partidos, muchísimos partidos que creo que, como agregaron la, la Copa contra la Leagues Cup y después la US Cup y después todo muy seguido, eh, si te pones a pensar, empezamos en febrero y estamos a noviembre y seguimos jugando. En octubre, mitad, casi, casi noviembre y seguimos jugando. Es una locura y no, tuvi y no tuvimos 
Normal, like, normalmente en otro, en, otro, en otro lugar tendrías algunas vacaciones y aquí no paramos ni un segundo. Empezamos desde enero con la pretemporada y ya estamos en, terminando el año y seguimos jugando. Es, es un desgaste muy grande físico, pero más que nada mentalmente. Mentalmente es un desgaste muy grande y, y hay muchísimos equipos que te piensan lo mismo, pero bueno, a esta altura del año ya no hay nada que decir, nada que cambiar, pero no sé qué, cuál será el plan para el año que viene porque... Eh, son muchísimos los partidos y, y creo que si la liga nos quiere cuidar deberían hacer algo porque creo que esto está basado más en los números que en los que es el, el físico de los jugadores y el rendimiento que pueden dar los jugadores no, yo estoy uh -huh. completamente con, uh, acuerdo con usted y mira, esta primera ronda hay, es una serie como en béisbol, mejor de tres, y es un montón de, part, un montón de días también que tenemos que esperar los partidos. La verdad es una locura. So I, I asked uh -huh. Julian um, about, obviously everyone's been talking about the amount of matches, you know, not only just the union, but the rest of the MLS has to play. And, and obviously, you know, he's not the only one. A lot of players are feeling the same way. Uh -huh. It's just way too many matches that, that they have been playing here. Um, you know, there's, there's times, you know, you got to go to the West Coast, you got to play Lee's Cup. U.S. Open Cup, it definitely gets a lot. I think there was one, I remember this, there was one month they played nine matches. Yeah. And that's, it's truly incredible. And, you know, for Leon, you know, you, meant, you mentioned the mental aspect about this. It, it is it is a lot. It's definitely a lot. So we'll see if the, the league does make a change there. Yeah, yeah. And that's something I know we've talked about too, Julian, is it's mentally and physically draining. So uh, thank you for sharing your thoughts on that, on the team. I know people in the chat have questions for you. I don't want to keep you too long. I'm going to just pick one question out of the chat. There's a lot. So clearly this means we just have to have you back. We have to get you out of your lovely spot in Philly to come down here at the studio and we'll join us. Here. We'll play some games. We'll have some fun. Maybe we'll eat some food. Maybe we'll get some cheesesteaks or I don't know, whatever. Uh, chimichanga? Uh, ch we'll get, we'll get churrascos. What is it called again? Uh, we'll get churrascos. Chimichurri. We'll, no chimichurri. chimichurri. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> this chimichanga. Chimichanga, chimichanga is Mexican, but they are I'm very sorry, delicious sorry. as well. Very delicious as my well. My bad, my bad, my bad. We'll get some whatever it is. Basically, whatever you want to eat, we got it. Uh, <laughs> and we'll get you down here. What is the studio? It's right in Spring Garden. I don't want to give it away. We're on air right now. Um, but we're not far from you is what I can tell you. We're, I was going to give you the address. Like, we're not live on the internet. And we have people that can just show up. We're at this address. Uh, no, we're in Spring Garden. We'll have to get the address to you. It's definitely not far. I can tell you that. And uh, we'll be able to have you down. We'll do some fun stuff with you and be able to have uh, chances to chop it up. So. We'll have mate together, Julian. I like mate. Okay. Sounds good. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, That's there good. you go. Chimichurras, right? Uh chimichurri is the sauce that goes on top of the steak churrasco, which I know okay. Lynn's not like, but I, I, I actually make it pretty pretty well. I've Do you like told. ceviche? Huh? Do you ceviche? like ceviche? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I like so. Okay, I'm getting the menu together. I got it. I got us. Uh, but yes, Julian, thank you so much for taking time to join us. Uh, the last question, I'm going to pick one from the chat because, again, there's a lot that have come in, is asking about your favorite moment at the club so far that you've had with the union. I mean, I have a lot of moments that I enjoy being in Philly. Uh, the best one. I think the best one was... The final when we got to the when we got champions of the Eastern Conference, I think that was the best moment. There's a lot of this, oh, good Agreed. moments, but I, I'll, I'll pick that one because I remember we were losing that game and everyone was, was everyone thought that it would be the same thing as last year where we lost against New York City. I wasn't here, but I heard about the situation and everything, and then. Just to come back on that game, the fans were crazy. Like the atmosphere was unbelievable when I scored the first goal and after we scored, Daniel scored the second goal right away. It was just crazy and I enjoyed it so much. And then I think this, these fans deserve the the cup at home. And then, yeah, that, that that's probably the best memory I, I have. That. And I'm sure of all the goals you've had, that's probably one of the most memorable. Um, but even that game in general, as you talk about, if you said anything different, I don't, I'd be very pleasantly surprised uh, because without a doubt to me, that seems like just a, a moment that a pinch me moment. So thank you again, yeah. Julian, so much for joining us. Gracias por tu Gracias, tiempo. Julian. Muy amable, parce. I was, I, was, I was going in with my Spanish, man. I was ready. Uh, <laughs> hasta 
luego, amigo. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Hasta luego. Thank you. Ciao. Good luck this weekend. All right. Woo, that was fun. That was um, fun. We'll definitely have to have Julian back. I know you guys are talking about, uh, you know, the, the different questions you had for him. Of course, time is of the essence. We only have so much time with him. Um, Eugene Krabs, no, I was not Patrick Beverly on the pitch. I was more of an Allen Iverson. Okay. Mm, um, but, like <laughs> right? Um, but, yeah, I, I mean, it just, that was interesting to see. I, what was the, I guess, something that surprised you? Um, because I can tell you what surprised me. I feel a little more optimistic coming out of that conversation about this weekend. Just a little, just a little more optimistic. Yeah, no, that he didn't like Jimmy Choo. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I you know honestly, like how so even keel he he is. I don't right? know why. I feel like we've been friends. I feel like we can like hang out. We've been friends for a while. Yeah, he's <laughs> so chill. Like I know he doesn't drink, but I would definitely like love to grab a beer or a glass of wine with him. But mm -hmm. like just how chill he was, I, I was definitely not not expecting that. But that's I was not. good to see. Yeah, well, I'm I, I'm curious about a lot of other things to learn about Julian, and hopefully we'll have a chance to learn about him more and have him on the show. I'm not sure if it's a sneakerhead or not, but if you are, you can go to Soul Savvy because the Soul Savvy app makes it easy to keep up with the latest news, releases, raffles, and sales in the sneaker world. For all of you guys that are all about your shoe game and trying to have the latest kicks, they are the one-stop shop for everything sneakers, and they have a lot coming your way. So you don't have to miss the release again. If you turn on their notifications, you'll get instantly notified whenever you your size is available to buy. They also have some raffles you can keep up with that happen. And then uh, they have a release calendar, an accurate mm -hmm. release calendar that keeps you updated on releases that are upcoming. So whether you're a casual buyer, a sneakerhead, somewhere in between, Soul Savvy has something for every level. And uh, you can use the different types of apps they've got, notifications they have. They've got a basic version. They've got a mobile plus, a premium. And now when you sign up for Soul Savvy, the information on your screen, including a QR code, makes it that much mm. easier that you can now head over to Soul Savvy, click the links, scan the QR code, type in soulsavvy.com, whichever way is easiest. But soulsavvy.com slash P-H-O-Y allows you to be able to check out all the great shoes that are at Soul Savvy. Again, head on over to Soul Savvy slash P-H-L-Y. Absolutely. And I know, Trav, man, I see your question there. We'll get to that in a second. But <laughs> playoffs? Who I know people are down about the playoffs. Well, listen, guys, I'm bringing you guys the optimist, so I hope that changes your mind. So if you're thinking last minute, well, how am I going to get to this playoff game? Well, check out our other sponsor, Game Time. Thank you so much to our friends over at Game Time. The best spot to get your last minute tickets. Literally head on over to Chester, tailgate a little bit, come hang out, come find me, and then last minute, go get your tickets. For first time users right now, you get $20 off when you use the code PHLY. So thank you to our sponsor at Game Time. Try yes. man, wants to know. Yeah, Trav, man, thank you for all of you guys that have been yes. bringing the questions. Again, make sure you're liking, join the conversation. I know, unfortunately, we weren't able to get to all of your questions because we only had Julian for a certain amount of time. But Trav, man's asking about score predictions. JB, I think we should give some score predictions. It sounds so, like a great idea. So this weekend, game one of the playoffs, mm -hmm. I'm a little nervous. I'm always nervous. Um, but I'm a little more optimistic going into game one than I was prior to our conversation with Julian. He's calm, cool, and collected. If he's not nervous, why you. should I be? <laughs> so I'm going to go with the Union winning game one, one nothing. Okay. It makes me scared because it's a very low-scoring, close game, very down to the wire. But just having played the Revolution a week ago, it's hard to play a team again so close back-to-back. I'm going to go with one nothing. I don't know who's scoring. I'm not going to go as far as to say when they score or who's scoring. I'm just going to keep it at one nothing. I'm going to keep it simple. What about you, JP? About a week ago. I'm sorry, Dre got <laughs> me there. Um, I am optimistic because everyone can tell here. I'm going to go with a 2 nothing win. I think not only is this team going to change the mindset around, I think this fan base is going to turn its mindset around. We're going to remember what playoffs is all about here in Philadelphia. And as a Philly sports fan, when one team goes down, what do you do? You pick yourself up, and we go to the next team. And that is Saturday here at Chester. The Union versus the Revs. It's Boston versus Philly. Do I have to say anything else? I like the I like the, the Union here. I Give me a 2-0 victory here for the Union. I think our boy Carranza gets on the board again. Back-to-back -back goals against the New England. We didn't even ask him about that goal he scored. Oh, that was a funny yeah. one. <laughs> it was. <laughs> on the ground and everything. Um, I'll go, you know what? I'll go with Allie. I think Allie deserves one here. I, I like the union okay. here. Give me a 2-0 victory. Okay, okay. I know, Travin, you're saying a 2-1, so close. 
Um, well, so what we're that? predicting with with Julian and Gazdag scoring a PK, very specific. I know Messenger, welcome Messenger. Glad to hear you're joining us from South nice. Africa. That's fantastic to hear. I'm happy that you've been enjoying it. Jose's also giving the compliments, saying yes. that he enjoyed Larry's article. Larry is in Shout the building still. We'll let Larry know that you enjoy his article on the blog. We love it. We love it. Thanks, you guys, for tuning in, for checking things out. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling okay. I, this is a must-win game. That's what has me nervous because I, you definitely don't want to go into New England down. True. So I, I'm actually going to go... <laughs> oh, Eugene Krabs, that's actually very valid. Well, it's so, it's Barkley. Does that give any uh, He didn't win a championship. Point? That's oh, not that's not encouraging either. Bring in a champ. We need a champ. For those of you that are listening on podcast platforms, JP is wearing a Charles Barkley throwback Sixers jersey. It's a very cool jersey. It's a classic. Um and Eugene Krabs did make sure to point out that he can't <laughs> take JP seriously with a Sixers jersey on. I get it's it. the NBA's just starting off. Obviously the Sixers are having their season opener. So yeah, I mean, why not? It's Bucks Sixers and you're just bringing in the bringing in the excitement so uh hopefully we will get some of these results any of our predictions let's hope any of our predictions are correct 2-1 2-0 1-0 that's what i'm going with uh if you guys are looking to go down to the game though we do have a ticket giveaway coming up so maybe you go to the game time app to try to pay for tickets or you can enter our ticket giveaway for a chance Mm. to win them for free i know the ticket prices as jose pointed out have dropped, but it's still more expensive than free 99. So with our ticket giveaway, we'll be dropping the details of how you can enter. It will be easy. They'll be uh, coming your way on social media. So make sure you're following us at PHLY underscore union for ticket giveaway details and have a chance to possibly go for free to Subaru Park to watch our buddy Julian and the rest of the union take on the revs. So staying positive, Trav, man. We're staying positive, right? Oh, yeah. Let's oh, go. Oh, yes. Cross your fingers. Cross your toes. Do your positive dance. Whatever it is you got to do to bring in the positive mojo. Wear the mojo. jersey. Wear the underwear. Whatever. Wear the right, yeah. Your lucky socks, lucky draws, <laughs> lucky whatever it is, hat. Bring it all out because we need all the positivity coming in. So we will have more coming your way. JP is going to be down at the game on Saturday. We also are going to be checking out all the fun going around the city tomorrow um, as it's going to be the drum tour for the union. Yes. So you might be able to catch us at the drum tour tour and have fun with us there but uh if you have fun with us we've got more fun coming your way we're always bringing the vibes always bringing the fun make sure you're following subscribing for those of you that are joining in maybe for the first time messenger trav man if you've been joining regularly eugene Krabs, jose and uh Rainiel, all of you guys thanks for tuning in as always uh stay tuned for more from us here at phoi union podcast we've got larry Tyler, JP, Renee, Julian. It was a big cast today. Thanks for tuning in. See you guys next time. Go Union.